G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. Happy Valentine's Day to anybody who celebrates the holiday. In honor of Valentine's Day, there has been a TikTok trend that has been going around and I wanted so badly to react to it. And it looks like Today News actually put a little article blurb special together. Are Aussie men dating duds compared to other countries? As an American who's dated plenty of American men, who's dated a few Aussie men and is married to an Australian, I actually have something to say about this. So if you want to see what that is, I haven't actually seen this full clip yet from today, but we're going to react to it and I'm going to give you guys my perspective on this trend. Grab a picky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Sam Jacob Elordi have done a lot for mm. Australia's tourism, <laughs> with travellers flocking from all over the world to try and find love down oh. under. Turns out, us fellas are getting a bad mm. rap. Girls, if you think that Irish men are hard work, go to Australia. You will be crawling back to Ireland to marry an Irish man. Australian men, I don't think they know how to speak to women. How do people, like, get together here? Because I, I can't with the standard. Can someone please explain to me how Australian dating rules work? Because I don't get it. I do not understand. I feel like if you say one wrong thing, you're left on red, and then the amount of dates that have been organized, and then the guy's just never texting me again, has never happened anywhere else in the world. Ooh, I feel so bad for these girls. I remember being in my 20s and having to deal with that. Um, it's not just an Australian thing. I think part of it really does come down to age, because just going off of the age of the girls that have been doing this, and like I guess the age of people who use TikTok, it is such an issue for people in their 20s. Because like in your 20s, a lot of people want to have fun. That's the reality of it. A lot of people don't want to commit or they kind of sort of commit, but they don't really go all in. There's now these new terminology people use of situationships and we're in the talking phase. Dating nowadays is so weird and I feel so bad for Gen Z who has to put up with this. Like, I remember when I was dating in my mid-twenties and ghosting, the term ghosting just became a thing. That was one that I heard all the time. Now it's like situationships and we're just talking. I feel bad. I feel like you kind of have to run the gauntlet a little bit in your twenties to actually find somebody who's worth being in a relationship with. So I don't know if that's just an Australian thing. I think a lot of that has to come down to age. And every woman I speak to has the exact same horror stories about Australian men. It is absolutely brutal, Carlos. <laughs> Lucky you're not on the market, mate. Jane Damon's joins us fresh off her flight back to Scotland and Sydney Commerce Dana Hocking, whose recent article has caused quite a stir. Jane, we want to come to you first. Did you flee the country because of these duds, huh? Oh, whoa. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I'm going to tell TikTok for sure. Was it that bad? <laughs> I mean, come on. I went on six dates in three weeks and the best one was when I got catfished. Oh. Talk to us about that. He lied about his height, his age, his profession. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, but he was still attractive and he paid for everything. So, oh, that's a plus. So what oh, why did you let him pay for everything if he catfished you? Why did you stay? Why did you say, like, that's something that boggles me. You do not owe anybody anything when you are dating. When you were just starting out, first date, you go to grab coffee with somebody, you do not owe them much of your time. You owe it to them to show up if you make plans and you confirm and you agree. <laughs> but if somebody catfishes you, why would you stay? Like, that's what boggles my mind, is why do people accept it? Why do people sit through the whole date? Why don't you just say, no, that's it, I'm leaving. You are under no obligation to stay for a full dinner. You are no under, you're under no obligation to finish a drink. Like just get out of the situation. I feel like it does take a little bit of time to learn that and to understand that because particularly coming at this from a woman's perspective, we feel so obligated to make people around us comfortable. And you know, when it comes to dating and if you're getting catfished, no, absolutely not. Just leave. I've left dates that were horrible. I can say luckily I've never been catfished. Maybe like a little bit by one guy's height but even then, like, I knew he wasn't going to be a tall guy to begin with. He said he was 5'6". He was literally my height. Like, I've never met a guy who's shorter than me, come to think of it. But, like, we were at eye level. That's an about me. We went on a couple dates. He was American, though. He wasn't Australian. What's wrong with yeah, you there? Come on! 
I mean, he did say, he said he was a semi-professional footballer um, and he went as far as to name a team. Like, he really, I mean, he dove into that line. Open to definition, you know, maybe. Maybe he was. All right, so you didn't fall in love, you fled back to Scotland <laughs> um, because uh, obviously the Scottish guys are better. <laughs> no. No, maybe not. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, you have written a couple of articles about this yeah. too. I mean, what's the, what's the problem? Why are Aussie blokes duds? They're just lazy. Jade got it right. The word is lazy. They turn up to dates in board shorts. If you turn up to a date, because first they'll ask you, just come to my house and hang. Like, I've never had so many Uber Eats in my life. Uh. Enough. Or they'll... But why are you accepting it? That's what I don't... That's what boggles my mind. Like, even in the States, American men do this too, and I have turned down dates where they're like, oh, come hang out at my house. Or they want to go to some small little corner bar that I've never heard of. Like, no, either we're going to meet someplace that's going to be a little bit more mutual, or we're going someplace that's public. I don't care if we walk around a park for an hour and it's free. I don't care how much you spend on a date. But even just as a safety thing, why are people going to somebody's house for a date? Like, we're not talking Tinder hookups. I'm assuming we're talking about an actual date here. Why are you accepting it? Why entertain it? There are so many people out there in the world. Why are you accepting something of such low standard? Now, there are going to be women that are out there who are fine with first dates to somebody's house and Uber Eats. And if you're not, don't go. It is that simple. Say, come to the pub. And then between, you'll go to the pub, but they're also watching the NRL or the mm. AFL or the crickets on. <laughs> and like, guys. <laughs> We they need to step up, right? We is, live in isn't Australia. That a date, though? <laughs> no, that is a horrible. Whatever. Date. Go out with your bros we for that. We live at, like near beaches. We've got yeah. art galleries. We've got you know. Who wants to go to an art gallery? Everybody Women does. Do. You're not going to find a real man who wants to do that. <laughs> but woo us, just like you know, take the Mickey and woo us for the first. All right. Three well, days. you must have a to-do list then, Jana. What should men be doing? Okay. Before we get into this list, and I'm just going to say it if. You go to a pub and you're supposed to be there for a date with somebody and they're paying attention to the game most of the time. Clearly you guys aren't connecting, so why are you wasting more time around this person? Or even if you feel like there's a little bit of a connection but you're not getting the attention you deserve on a date, then leave. And you know what? If women just left in these sorts of situations, eventually men are going to realize they'd have to up their game. Because you just let them walk all over you and now they know that they can lower the bar as low as they want and they're still gonna get a date. Men should be wearing cologne, checking your breath. I hate that I have to say, brush your teeth. It's so obvious. Men, brush your teeth. Like, the halitosis is real. Oh. A chewy or a mint or something just in your pocket. Just a little Listerine. Yeah, yeah. So That's maybe you're just Listerine off blokes in general. No, oh no, no, no. <laughs> Ask all my friends, I'm boy crazy. I'm off Aussie blokes because they just got back from New York ah. and those men have game. They treat it like a numbers game. They go to brunch because they know all the women. Yeah, but there. you don't know if the, the blokes in, in America. Oh, OK, so I've never dated men in New York. I've dated men who are very professional, who would go to New York kind of regularly. And while American men generally do seem to put a little bit more effort into dating than what I've heard women say Aussie men do here, they are so much more superficial about a lot of things when it comes down to dating. Now, I can't badmouth most American men that I dated because honestly, a lot of them were nice guys, and I don't mean that in the cringy nice guy way. Like, I mean, they were genuinely nice people. They were thoughtful. They were well-mannered. We'd go out for drinks. We'd get a cup of coffee. Sometimes we'd go out to dinner. And they were genuinely nice, down-to-earth men. But there were some that were absolute scumbags terrible people. Some people I just genuinely didn't click with and that is totally okay. But with a lot of them, even the nicer ones, it felt like it came down to something really fake and artificial. Like, first of all, you're in New York, which is one of the largest metropolitan, most bougie, expensive cities to live in. A lot of those men who live in the New York area already have money. I'm assuming New York is in Manhattan, not the Bronx and Brooklyn, all that other stuff. Like, in Manhattan, they have money. They know they have to wine and dine a woman to get what they want. And once they get it, they're gone. For them, dating is so much more a level of entertainment or some way to keep themselves busy on a Friday or Saturday night than it is to authentically date somebody. 
America are more into blokes or themselves than girls. Oh, I mean, they, too they just put it on. Well, I don't care. Put it on. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> works. Put it on me. I am like here for the taking. I went through security at JFK, and the security guy cracked onto me, and I was like, Yeah, you're I've right. still got it. Oh yeah. I've yeah. Um, Jade, uh, I mean, do you still? I wonder what she means by cracked onto her, because there are instances, and I swear, since I moved over here. I've never been catcalled. I've never seen a woman get catcalled anywhere. And like, let me tell you guys, I am straight. And there are some gorgeous women walking around the Sydney CBD. Like my jealousy radar just goes off like crazy walking around there. Like in Philly, I was an eight out of 10 here. I feel like I am a two out of 10 walking around those days. I feel like a mountain troll compared to some of these women. And let me tell you, no matter how stunning or gorgeous they are, people do not catcall around here. Now, I know there's like some TikTok that was going around and people were joking about it. And maybe all the way out in like the western suburbs and western parts of Sydney, maybe. But overall, not something I've seen here. And I've lived here for over two years. And I'm not just talking about from personal experience, I'm talking about from what I have seen other women go through. Like I just haven't seen catcalling be a thing here. Whereas in the States, it happened all the freaking time ever since i was 12 i was getting cat called over in the states it's just sadly it's common when people walk past you when people are driving past you hell i have one guy who wasn't even paying attention and rear-ended somebody else because he was too busy cat calling that happens all the time in the states here cat calling really is not a thing or it's rare at the very least which honestly i gotta say it's a little bit more respectful to women to not cat call than to deal with some of the nonsense that i had to deal with over in the states it's some of it's disgusting. There's cat calling, but then there's like the leering and, just, and there's more to it than that. It's not just somebody calling out a car window. Hold out, hold out some kind of hope. <laughs> Finding a dude down under or, or what? Is it all over? Just giving up. Oh, I think before if I'd met an Australian in the UK, I would have flocked to him. And now honestly, I'm going to take a wide berth. That, that accent's not going to do it for me anymore, I'm afraid. Oh. Oh, wow, Aussie men, you've been warned. But come on, I mean, maybe it's... I mean, could it be that your expectations are too high? <gasps> oh, I mean, is it, and could it be Ed. that you're, you're raising Please, the bar Carlos, to... Please, oh, Carlos, huh? No, do you know what? I got so many essays about this after I wrote that article going, men, lift your game. You've gotten really lazy. Like, I've had guys drop farts on dates. I've had on guys turn up day. in ripped bodies in thongs. All right. Is it too much to ask? to just take us for a nice drink. The thing is, all of that can come, but just not early. Let's just but go all out early. I also don't want to be invited to your house for Netflix and chill. <laughs> oh, lift our game. Anyway, I still think Aussie blokes are the best. Um, you, um, <laughs> and may the search continue for you ladies. Please come back and out here. All right. No, why are you accepting it? That's what it comes down to. I'm sorry, if I was on a date with somebody and they showed up in ripped board shorts, I would leave because clearly they do not care enough not just to make like a good impression, just a decent impression on somebody. If they care so little about their appearance, imagine how little they're going to care about their partner in the long run. Again, just because you agree to go out with somebody does not mean you're on some sort of obligation to stay on a date with them for more than two minutes. I don't care if you dropped an hour away and showed up. If you show up in like thongs or ripped board shorts to somewhere like nice, hell, even just a walk in the park, no, we're done. The only exception might be if maybe you just came back from work and that might be part of your uniform or something like that. I've had dates set up where people would ask me out and we both work in the city. You know what? Let's grab coffee right after work. Let's grab drinks right after work. Now, granted, I worked in an area where it was primarily office buildings, so normally there were people in like suits or some sort of business casual wear. But if you're out somewhere like more in the bush or something like that, if somebody's doing a physical job and they need to wear board shorts during the day, that's the only time I can see it being slightly acceptable. If you guys plan like some last minute little get together date and the guy shows up in ripped board shorts. But if that's not the case, why are you staying on dates with them? That's what I don't get. Raise your standards and you know what? You'll find men that have those standards. Like I'm saying this is someone who's been married twice. I've been on dates with a few Australians, not just my husband. I was married to an American before I met my now husband. I've been on dates with dozens of Americans. I've been on dates from guys who lived all around the world. You know what? It all comes down to accepting what your level of standards are. For me, a date was never Netflix and chill. I would never go over somebody's house for a first date. Hell, there was somebody that I went out with who on our second date had asked me to go over his house and he was going to make us dinner and all that stuff. 
no, sorry, I'm not comfortable going over somebody's house until I get to know them. Perfectly fine, we went out to dinner somewhere else. You know what, I actually dated that guy a little bit off and on, mostly because I kept breaking up with him, um, but we went out for about eight months. Just don't accept what isn't your standard. So that's it for this video, you guys. I know dating in Australia is a very, very casual thing from what my friends have told me. I have to admit, in my very limited experience, that was never my experience. Like compared to a lot of American men, some Aussie men I knew could really up their game if they wanted to. Like seriously, we've been married for two years and Mark still plans date nights for us regularly. So there are definitely those kinds of men out there, ladies. So what is your worst dating experience in Australia? I wanna know down below and let me know in the comments section. And if you guys like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate the support, you guys. Happy Valentine's Day, and I will see you all in my next video.